Hi, my name is Ella and I'm the Plants Meow. And today we're gonna to be talking about Ethereum stem propagation and particularly in perlite. So as I spoke about in my previous two videos, you heard some techniques that I use to stem propagate these plants. Now, this technique in particular is my absolute favorite. It has not failed me once and <laughs> I'm honestly surprised the kind of plants it has brought back kind of from the dead, which I will definitely get into. So the important thing to know about perlite is that it's a volcanic rock. And this particular volcanic rock is heated up to a certain temperature to where it pops like popcorn and it expands in size. Now what happens to the perlite at this point is that it gets this huge air bubble inside of it. So that makes it excellent for getting into your plant lots of aeration. And also the excellent thing about it is it has on the outside of the perlite, all of these crevices that develop and hold moisture. So perlite has the ability to give lots of air to your plant while also retaining moisture, which is excellent for anthuriums and all a lot of other house plants. So if you haven't tried perlite propagation, and it's honestly one I highly recommend. A lot of times plants can be propagated easily in water and things like that, but for anthuriums, perlite is just so amazing for them. And in particular, this method that I used, so I just have a bunch of perlite in a net pot. I put my stem cuttings inside with the perlite and I just fill the bottom of the bag with water and it kind of just, I can you can either put it in a bowl or if you have a saucer, fill the saucer with it. I just didn't have a big saucer. And then the perlite uses its capillary wicking action to bring moisture up into the plant so it has access to that moisture. So it stays moist, but aerated. It's the perfect environment for an anthurium, especially when they're closed off in something like a big Ziploc bag. There's lots and lots of humidity in here. So if we take a look inside this bag, we're going to see amazing things. Just kidding, um, but yeah. Move this over. So you can see that it's just plain perlite and I have a stem cutting here of a plant and then one right here. And this one has already grown me a leaf, which is amazing. So this cutting here, I just took off of another queen that I have. It had a really long stem and I just decided to chop it up and just propagate it to see if it could bring me a new plant. So when you propagate in theriums, you pretty much just chop up them into about, you need to use your stem. And don't confuse your stem with your petiole. The stem is the big chunky part that the petioles grow out from. And what you'll do is you'll cut them into two inch sections, but make sure to at least include two nodes on them. And then you'll just plop them right into the perlite and fill the bag with, fill the bag probably just the bottom with water and just kind of forget about it somewhere. I just put it in a random spot that had lots of light in my house and just forgot about it for a really long time. <laughs> and then the other day I noticed two of my propagation bags had leaves. So I can't wait to show you the other one because I thought those were dead. <laughs> so I'm really, really super happy about it. Oh, she looks so good. I know she's loving life. Queens, queens and their humidity. So with this other bag, it was an order that I didn't do an unboxing on because it was held up in customs for a long time and everything pretty much arrived dead, including what I thought was these two plants. I pretty much took their stems, which looked relatively lifeless, and I just placed them in the perlite after I cut off their leaves and their roots. So they didn't really have much to go off on. and they're both growing. I think, I honestly thought they had rotted in this bag because they smelled so bad, like I think a few weeks ago, but I was like, oh, I don't wanna deal with this. So I ignored it. So I think there might be some rot somewhere in this bag, but these plants are growing. So in this bag, as you can see, this leaf is just about out of the bag which is insane. I honestly didn't know until yesterday when I decided that I was gonna be recording this video today that this leaf 
or both these leaves were even here. It was honestly astounding. And I have another one here, which has yet to unfurl yet, so we don't know who that is. I honestly know one of the plants in the bag. The other one, I can't remember what it was, but one of them is a brownie eye mixed with the Chamberlainii. It's a hybrid and I'm super, super happy that it is alive. I don't know which one of it this is. I thought it could have been this one at first, but this one kind of reminds me of a Chamberlainii and it's gross. What I would love to do is take these out and pot them because they're kind of growing out of this bag and these are pretty big Ziploc bags, but I'm also a little bit worried that repotting them right now may stunt the leaf growth. So that kind of scares me. I think I'm going to do it anyway and then kind of just put them in the greenhouse and hope for the best. And I'll kind of give an update and let you know if that truly did stunt their growth because Stuff like that does happen when you repot an Ethereum while it's growing a new leaf. I know that for sure. See, now I'm like talking myself out of it. I was gonna repot all of these. <laughs> do I wanna risk it? You know what? I have a bigger saucer now, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take it out of the Ziploc bag, have it in a saucer, and when they fully develop, I'm gonna go ahead and plant them because I am genuinely uncomfortable with planting Ethereums when they're growing new leaves. So it's just really scary and could definitely result in their death. And I just don't want that. Now your plant wouldn't die, but your new leaf growing would in the sense that it wouldn't get any bigger. So also if you're getting shipped in Ethereum, preferably have it shipped with soil. Anytime someone unpots their Ethereum and they ship it, I haven't had any success with it coming back, but those shipped in soil, I've had all the success with, so. That's pretty much my theory there. So I'm gonna get a saucer real quick, just so you can see it. Got a six inch saucer. I would have preferred an eight inch to have a little bit of wiggle room. So now you can really see like how these look, like just how big. Um, but yeah, there's tons of growth on here. She has growth coming on here and at the edge here. They just both look really good. These were cold damage plants. So I don't know exactly how that affected the stems, which portion of the stem is alive. It would be really unfortunate to just have these leaves but the plant itself not survive. But I'm glad I at least have this out so that I can put it in my greenhouse and let them grow. I'm really excited to kind of just see like what they're gonna end up looking like. I'm gonna put this one to the side. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and pot up my queen because she looks like about hardened. Now with this quarantine, I am running out of net pots, so she's just gonna go in a plastic pot for now. <laughs> I actually have a few more net pots, but I'm saving it for like these two propagations over here. And this is the queen that I'm not particularly keeping that I was just kind of propagating for fun. So yeah, at least we'll get to see the roots from her. <laughs> Let's take her out and see. So nothing's particularly squishy or anything, but you can also see like how big of a section that I did cut. So she has this big root here. Yeah. She's doing good. Ooh, I got like perlite all over me. Looking very cute. So moral of the story, I find propagating in perlite extremely successful for anthuriums. They just seem to really enjoy that air and that added moisture retention that perlite provides it. And if a queen anthurium approves this method, we should all approve this method. <laughs> this is something I definitely want to do on a more larger scale this upcoming growing season. So luckily before the quarantine, I did end up buying kind of a big tank where I'll fill the bottom with water and then I'll just kind of put net pots with perlite just sitting in there. That way I don't have to use up Ziploc bags. I do reuse these Ziploc bags, but they will get to a point where they'll get like a hole or something in them. 
so I know they won't last forever. And if I have a tank, it's something I could just reuse over and over again. So that was something I really wanted to kind of invest in and try my hand at. I probably won't be insanely propagating my Anthereans this up, this growing season, but definitely I plan on doing it a lot the next one because I don't have many Anthereans. I think I'm going to be repotting this year at all. They'll probably wait till the following year. I kind of just want them to fill out their pots more. Some of them have grown out of their net pots, but just like a little bit and it doesn't really bug me if there's like a root or two kind of sticking out or laying in the pot. So they're gonna be staying in there because, and the reason for that is because net pots create so much airflow for Ethereums. You're gonna have roots popping out of your net pots like really quickly after you pot them. So it's just kind of something that can't be helped. It doesn't necessarily mean they're root bound. So just take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and water these guys and with some super thrive because especially transplanting them right now, from into a new medium, I would want to make sure that they're pretty happy, especially this queen here. It's funny because Chris just walked over here for a second and even though I plan to like sell this queen, this kind of like green algae like on her stem from being in the perlite bag and it looks so like natural and he actually asked me if he could grow a queen in his room, <laughs> like if it would live and I was like, a queen in theory? <laughs> in your room but we're actually gonna try it he does like the plant so we'll see and one thing that i haven't mentioned about stem propagations which i'll also make a video about literally showing you how to do it is that with stem propagations is that your plants are going to be the exact clone of the plant that you've propagated it from so seedlings are all unique they're going to come out very different. They're going to be, some are going to be stronger than others. Some are going to show different kind of attributes. With stem propagation, you're not going to have that. You're replicating the same plant that you propagated it from. I find that a pretty cool kind of thing that you can do with your anthuriums. So twinsies. <laughs> So I really hope you like this video. Please give it a like down below if you did. And I would appreciate your thoughts on perlite propagation or any of these propagation methods down below. I would really appreciate your feedback. And if you want to subscribe, I do post every Wednesdays. And for the most part, I don't know if this, what day this video will be, but I will be attempting to do more videos during this quarantine. So we all have more content to look forward to. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. This is one of our propagation queens. Why is she so far down there? It's just the stem. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> they have chunky stems. Pretty cool though. That makes it look more natural. I know, right? We're propagating that? Yeah, we're, this is a cut from one of our queens that we're selling. So we can have another queen to sell. Is that going to sell? Yeah. You want to sell that? Mm -hmm. The uh, green makes me want it. What? The green part makes me want it. Aw, uh, you ever suck out my like, own that queen? That makes it look so <laughs> natural. <laughs> And they, would they survive around me? Like in my in my environment without it having to be in a special place? My queen and the queen in theory? Yeah. <laughs> Here is like the most difficult plant in the world to maintain. I mean we could try it. I still have to get my peach tree and the other one from Yeah. House. She's gonna be a six foot long pet. You know that, right? Six foot? Yeah, she's she's well, then that'll be halfway to that point where we'll be selling it. <laughs>